Good morning. Good morning. As you can see, the reading today is taken from the book of Mark, chapter 4, verses 1 through 34. Again, he began to teach beside the sea. Such a very large crowd gathered around him that he got into a boat on the sea and sat there while the whole crowd was beside the sea on the land. He began to teach them many things in parables, and in his teaching he said to them, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Other seed fell on the rocky ground, where it did not have much soil, and it sprang up quickly, since it had no depth of soil. And when the sun rose, it was scorched, and since it had no root, it withered away. Other seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew and choked it, and it yielded no grain. Still other seed fell into good soil and brought forth much grain, growing up and increasing and yielding thirty and sixty and a hundredfold. And he said, Let anyone with ears to hear listen. When he was alone, those who were around him, along with the twelve, asked him about the parables. And he said to them, To you has been given the secret of the kingdom of God, but for those outside, everything comes in parables, in order that they may indeed look but not perceive, and may indeed listen but not understand, so that they may not turn again and be forgiven. And he said to them, do you not understand this parable? Then how will you understand all the parables? The sower sows the word. These are the ones on the path where the word is sown. And when they hear, Satan immediately comes and takes away the word that is sown in them. And these are the ones sown on rocky ground. And when they hear the word, they immediately receive it with joy. But they have no root and endure only for a while. Then, when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately they fall away. And others are those sown among the thorns. These are the ones who hear the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth and the desire for other things come in and choke the word, and it yields nothing. And these are the ones sown on, the, on good soil. They hear the word and accept it, and bear fruit thirty and sixty and a hundredfold. He said to them, Is a lamp brought in to be put under a bushel basket, or under the bed, and not on the lampstand? For there is nothing hidden except to be disclosed, nor anything secret except to come to light. Let anyone with ears to hear listen. And he said to them, Pay attention to what you hear. The measure you give will be the measure you get and still more will be given to you. For those who have, more will be given, and from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. He also said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground, and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not hope to know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, and then full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle, because the harvest has come. He also said, With what can we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which, when sown upon the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs, and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. We invite the children to come forward as we sing our own leaders. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. 
So our reading from Mark 4 today is chock full of parables. A parable is a short story that helps people to understand something else. It's like a metaphor or an analogy, using familiar things and situations to help people understand a point in a different way. Like Aesop's fable of the tortoise and the hare. You've heard this, yes? We hear how these two mismatched opponents enter a race together where everybody expects the speedy rabbit to win. But in the end, the tortoise pulls out the victory. How? Because although the tortoise was slow, he kept moving and kept moving, where the rabbit was kind of arrogant, knowing he was going to win, so he'd stop and take a nap along the way. Aesop simply could have told people, you know, slow and steady wins the race, but telling a story teaches the point in a way that people understand better. A friend of mine did her internship at a church near Miami a few years ago. She was teaching her confirmation class about Jesus' transfiguration, you know, when Jesus appeared on the mountain with Moses and Elijah, and his clothes shone dazzling white. She said to them, you just have to imagine how incredibly bright it must have been. It's like, it's like stepping outside on a cold, sunny winter day when there's a brand new blanket of snow. You know how the snow sparkles like diamonds? She looked at her students who looked at her like she was crazy, and one of them finally said, um, no, we live in Florida, remember? <laughs> It was a good lesson in knowing her audience and what they can relate to. We would totally understand our, my friend's reference, but if you were trying to teach someone about, from the Midwest using an analogy or a parable, you don't use an illustration about the subclimates of Central Africa. Jesus did a lot of teaching all around Israel, speaking with all sorts of people from different backgrounds. And rather than speaking philosophically or academically, Jesus chose to get his points across by using analogies and telling parables about things people would understand, things like salt and light and soil and seeds. Even if people who heard him weren't farmers, everybody was familiar with the importance of good soil, of sowing seeds and harvesting, because their lives depended on it. Seeds and soil were things everybody in Galilee would understand. These parables seem very simple. Plant your souls, soils, plant your seeds in good soil, or they won't grow. Mustard seeds are tiny, but they become a huge plant. But though parables seem simple, they can have more than one meaning, often a deeper meaning, which not everybody is going to understand. Different people hear parables differently. Even something as simple as a seed can have different meanings. And in looking at this passage this week, I was amazed at how many poets and composers have written hymns about these parables, about sowers and seeds. We're singing a few of them today, but there are even more that have been echoing through my ears all week. So I thought it might be interesting to listen to some of these seedy hymns and talk about them. First, a verse from the hymn, The Word of God is Source and Seed, which was in the Blue With One Voice hymnal. Here's verse one. The Word of God is source and seed. It comes to die and sprout and grow. So make your dark earth welcome warm. Your deep the grain God bent to sow. In the Lord let us rejoice, in the Lord let us rejoice, in the Lord let us rejoice. So in this hymn, the seed is very clearly the word of God, being planted and growing in the soil of our lives. And the first thing we hear is that the seed comes to die. It sounds morbid. But if you think about it, that's what a seed does. In order for a plant to grow, the seed has to die by splitting open and allowing shoots to come out of it. Life of the plant comes out of the death of the seed. 
And to think more deeply, we can understand that the soil is us. We're the soil that the Word of God is planted into. The hope is that God's Word grows and takes root in our dark earth. And on a deeper level, we think of that seed also as God's Word. We're reminded that Jesus is also referred to as God's Word in the flesh. And as we think of the seed bringing, dying to bring new life, we're reminded of Jesus' own story. Just as a seed dies to bring life to a plant, Jesus died on the cross to bring eternal life to all the world. Jesus is the seed that dies to give life to all. Later in Mark 4, Jesus tells a short parable about a mustard seed. There is a new hymn called, The Reign of God Like Farmer's Field. Here's verse 4. Like most a tree, the reign of God from tiny seed will spread. Till birds of every feather come to nest and there be fed. So on the surface, Jesus is simply saying that while mustard seeds are tiny, when they're planted, they become a huge shrub, taller than me, from this tiny seed. It's tiny, but mighty. But Jesus isn't just telling charming truths of nature. Jesus is comparing a mustard seed to the kingdom of God. And I'd like to tell you I know exactly what that means, but Jesus makes it clear that these parables aren't going to be clear and easy for all people to understand. There's a hidden meaning in them, some of which we might understand, some of which might not be obvious to us in this time and place. We're not the people who are standing by the shore of the Sea of Galilee listening to Jesus, people who are desperately hoping for a Messiah to come and free them from Rome. We are not the persecuted first century Christians who Mark was writing to encourage. But from our perspective, we can understand that the kingdom of God may seem tiny and powerless, but it's actually enormous, growing and giving life. The kingdom of God is a place of shelter and refuge for many. Does this just mean that the kingdom of God is heaven where we're all welcomed after this life is over? Or does it mean that God's kingdom is here as well? Probably yes and yes. But the details remain a mystery for us to ponder and pray about. Mark, and especially Matthew, contain many parables of the kingdom to keep us busy, trying to better understand God and what Jesus was trying to say to his original audience and us. Finally, many composers have read these CD parables and started to understand them more personally. This is a verse from the hymn, Bring Forth the Kingdom. You are seed of the word, O people, bring forth the kingdom of God. Seeds of mercy and seeds of justice grow in the kingdom of God. Bring forth the kingdom of mercy, bring forth the kingdom of peace, bring forth the kingdom of justice, bring the city of God. So as we talked about, yes, Jesus is the word of God. He's the seed, the seed that's planted in us to grow. And that seed can also represent the kingdom of God, which may seem small but grows and expands more than we can imagine. But also, these hymn writers are telling us that we're not just the soil sitting around waiting for seeds to be planted. It's also true that we are seeds too. You are a seed of the word, O oh people. So, you know, seeds grow, making plants that bear fruit, and those fruits have seeds that then can be scattered to grow near plants and new seeds. We are those seeds. We start as soil, receiving the seed, the word of Jesus. But as we follow Jesus, we grow, 
and we bear fruit, fruit for others, doing kind things, serving others, feeding and serving. And as we bear fruit for others, our seeds are scattered to bring life and justice to the world. Just think about that. As people who started out as dirt, many of us a little rocky or thorny, we simply receive the seed. But as we grow in faith, we bring forth fruit and seeds to share our faith in God's love with others. So we go from being dirt to plants to fruit to sowers of that seed, scattering God's love to bring justice and love and mercy to others. And as sowers of that seed, we also help to bring God's kingdom to others, to bring the kingdom of love, the kingdom of forgiveness, the kingdom of grace to the world. So to conclude this CD sermon, just one more verse from the hymn on what has now been sown. On what has now been sown, your blessing, Lord, bestow. The power is yours alone to make it sprout.